Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Another huge day of cryptocurrency news. It looks like the market is really setting up to surge, which is something we've looked at over the last few videos with our swing trading strategy, looking at all of this news coming together before it is news in the market. That's the whole idea about charts. So if you like the sound of that, you want to see some more on Ethereum, we're going to update Uniswap like we looked at yesterday. The NFT, which we touched on yesterday, which is TVK, looks like it surged about 30% overnight. Be sure to hit the subscribe button down below, bell notification icon so you can be updated with this time sensitive cryptocurrency news and like button. 2000 likes, let's see if we can get it to this video. It does go a long way to helping out the channel in the YouTube algorithm. Let everyone else see some nopium, hopium free cryptocurrency context. We definitely know there is a lot of BS hopium floating around everywhere. All right, let's take a look at the first bits and pieces. And the first things first, this is not financial advice. If you happen to buy anything that you see, please make sure you do your own research. It's up to you what you do with your own money. Just because you see it on the channel doesn't mean it is a buy recommendation. Now, there is not enough time in the day to go through and list every single trade update. So that's why it really is up to you guys. Reason being is we're talking about plenty of cryptocurrencies at the moment, in particular Cardano, Ethereum, the main ones here. We love Chainlink, we love some Uniswap, which we haven't talked about so much, but there was a setup on that and that was listed in this video, plus in our Facebook group. So this is the Investor Accelerator membership group. It does come with a trading course as well, plenty of videos, and I'll show you that right now. This is all of the video content which is continuing continuing to be updated as well. So we're adding in extra courses to this all under the same membership price. So this is what it says. It's the Investor Accelerator. It's to get you up to speed with your investing. So if you like the sound of that, check it out. Here is the website. There's a link to it in the description, not in the comments, not from any other scammers. There are plenty of scammers going on out there, but this is a link in the description. So I won't talk about that too much more, but I will make mention to it because the price is increasing. There is a lot of value in this and I continue to try and add more value to the course. I've brought on another educator, 11 years of trading experience. So if you're really interested in improving your skills, then I think now's the time to lock in the lower price. So looking at the Facebook group again, we're just talking about Ethereum and Uni, which I talk about on the channel as well. So this is just in a little more detail in basically more in a live sense because it takes a lot less work to be able to produce something for the group. It's just a post reviewing my ideas and then posting that. So thanks very much. I won't talk about it too much more, but I will mention it because the price is increasing. So you can get that link down below and there is 15% off as well if you wanted to add that to it. Let's take a look at our first piece, and this is the fear and greed index. 81, last week 78. Importance here is it looks like we've got a little support and resistance, and this was mentioned to me by a student in the membership group. We can have support and resistance everywhere. Obviously, we can't go too much further than 100 on here. Looking at this 40, the level of around 40, see that fear, greed index 40. We just had another bounce off around that 40 level. Short was 38. We had some other bounces around 41, 40, back here at 39, 38. So we could look at that as some support within a bull market for the fear and greed index. That looks pretty decent to me. Let's have another look at the Google Trends briefly. I've got Ethereum, Cardano, NFT. NFT is just dipping a little bit this week. However, we can see it pumping hard everywhere online. Everyone wants to know about NFTs, which is why we we're talking about TVK as well. Ethereum looks like it's just starting to trend up again. Unfortunately for us ADA holders, Cardano is on the drop. Now that we saw that on the charts as well, we could see that things aren't as bubbly as they were for Cardano a couple of weeks ago, especially leading up into the hard fork. Now this is just time and time again. The news is out there, it's the rumor until the event happens, which is the news, and then the event occurs and interest dies off. So we'll have a look at that in the charts in just a moment. Let's update uh, the coin market cap. I have a project here, Mantra Dow, which I'll talk about in just a bit. Coin market cap, 1.6 billion. Bitcoin sitting nearly at a trillion. Ethereum, 200 billion, basically one fifth of Bitcoin. Binance has just taken that third spot again. Cardano swapping places over and over again with Polkadot. Uniswap, the big one that we're looking at, 
uh, makes its way into the top 10 and just pushes Bitcoin Cash out of the top 10. No surprise really, probably see that shoot up and down throughout the bull market Bitcoin Cash, but personally I'm not going to get stuck into a losing position with Bitcoin Cash, which has been the case since basically it had launched. Moving back to MantraDAO, this has just been launched on SwiftX and on Binance as well. So for the international guys, Binance link in the description, SwiftX link for you guys, for the Aussies in the description down below. This is it here on SwiftX, 55 cents at the moment. It's gone up 50%. I bring it up as a DeFi project and basically it has all the buzzwords that we continue to look for on the channel. You know, it's um, it's got connections with PokerStarter. It's a Polkadot based decentralized exchange. It is launching on Ethereum first, then changing over to Polkadot, Decentra uh, DeFi. You know, it's just everything is buzzing about it and it's been it's just been launched on Binance as well. So it's pretty cool that it has been launched on SwiftX as well because for the Aussie exchanges, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get these new projects on there uh, very quickly. I will note a little further down that there is some fraud things going on with the CEO, but this is a lot of Chinese news coming out. So there's accusations that we can see here from the Chinese news about the CEO. And so when we look at it in terms of a, a bullish or a bearish time, this is like bearish news, but we're still seeing a price increase. We're still seeing a jump 50%. So if the bearish news can't even hold the price down, just imagine what the bullish news is going to do. So we're only at a $100 million market cap. Uh, fully diluted is 370. It's not small, but it's not over the top. You know, there's still 30% here and there is high staking on it. So we've got to pay attention to that as well. Go do some more research on it. Like I said, these aren't buying opportunities. Well, this isn't a buy recommendation. It's an idea to look further into, especially as it's uh, early on in its listing on Binance. Bloomberg, the mainstream stuff. Coinbase is said to be valued at 90 billion in private auction. I bring this up. Mainstream, mainstream is still talking very positive, positively about cryptocurrency. I like that. I, that's as far as I need to go with it. We've covered Coinbase before. We've looked at the IPO. It's still in a positive light with the mainstream. Looking at uh, this piece here, Bitcoin's 2021 returns destroy everything on Wall Street. More mainstream. Goldman Sachs still talking up Bitcoin now. Why? They are going nuts. So what are they doing? What's going on behind the scenes here? Are they trying to pump out their Bitcoin to the to the retail or are they really actually setting up for something big to create that that base? that stable environment so that they can buy in and continue to push the price up. I think it's the latter. I don't think it's the, the former. So to me, I still see this as great positive news all around. Mainstream, talking up Bitcoin, doing big things for Bitcoin. I'm looking at Doge. Now, I think I touched on this yesterday. If I didn't, you've probably seen it by now. Essentially, all I'm looking at it here is uh, Doge can go up in price and we did see a bounce on Dogecoin, it only up maybe 8% or 10%. I still think Dogecoin has got a way to go. It's part of the, the plan. It shoots up and then it continually dies off after a period of time. So just keep that in mind, even though there's a lot of this big hypey stuff going on. Yes, Mark Cuban's a billionaire, he owns a basketball team, talking about Doge, doesn't mean it's going to get the same pumps as it did when it was being talked about with Wall Street bets. So. Just be cautious of news as well. I'm not saying Doge is bad. I love it. You see me in my t-shirts all the time. I dress my daughter in Doge. It's fun. But I'm not here to go and throw my money out to uh, some other retail investors that are going to get burnt later anyway. You know, I've got my plan and I stick to the plan. And a quick look at the Doge chart really shows what we're talking about here. So this is a spike. Now the market is taking a little while longer to die off than it has in the past but it is known to take quite some time. So Binance doesn't have the most data. We want to go over to the Bittrex chart. And this is the plan you've seen on my channel many, many times. It pumps, it dumps. Sometimes it takes many, many months to uh, get back to the levels, our buy-in levels, but that's patience. That's what we've got to do. So right now, I don't see this as a great opportunity, especially if it has to double from here to actually get any sort of return. Dogecoin, not on my list just yet but it is definitely one that we keep on the alerts. So a Dogecoin, don't discount it. 
and uh, let's wait and see. You can see here again, it's just bouncing off some support initially. There's resistance, resistance, some support. I think it's only going to be temporary before we uh, re, uh, regain our, our low prices under the 30 Satoshis. That's enough on Doge for now. Let's move across to some Ethereum before we get onto Uniswap charts and the NFT that we were looking at yesterday, TVK. So crypto whales are accumulating Ethereum behind the scenes at rapid rates, Santiment. They usually have some pretty good data going on. So if you ever want to search that yourself, Santiment is a, a great website for that. Uh, we've seen that. We were looking at it on the charts before this news came out, which was uh, yesterday, the 8th. And we can easily see it on the charts without having to look at all of these different metrics and different charts. It's so much easier to learn one skill and get that really right. And then you can basically read the news before it happens. You can see something's happening. Then the news comes out a day or two later, maybe a month later to say, oh, this is, you know, this is why the reason on the chart happened. That's the way technical analysis works. It's really emotionally driven. Plus, you can see what the big boys are doing once that skill improves. Uh, I don't think this takes anyone by surprise. Um, crypto whales accumulating ETH, big bag holders, the Ethereum, 10,000 plus wallets uh, now hold the highest percentage of, percentage of supply in 40 months. So wallets that have over 10,000 ETH are increasing. That's all we need to know there. Raul Pal says Bitcoin and crypto will soar to a hundred trillion dollar market cap. This is obviously a headline if you haven't seen it by now. Raul Pal says that the whole space can reach a multi hundred trillion dollar ecosystem eventually. So this is obviously a headline to get some clicks. Yes, I think we could probably get into the dozens of trillion, you know, tens of trillions in the entire cryptocurrency ecosystem. The multi hundred trillion, I think would come from the supply shortage in the major cryptos like Bitcoin and Ethereum. And those prices would just skyrocket to give us the false look of multi hundred trillion dollar market caps. You, you know what I'm saying there? Basically, if there is a supply shortage and there's one Bitcoin on the market, you know, for argument's sake, but there are 10 people all wanting to buy it. They can only buy a tiny piece. They have enough money to buy a whole Bitcoin, but they can only buy a fraction of it. That will skyrocket the price well and truly up into those multi hundred trillion dollar uh, market caps before more uh, supply comes to the market and just brings it back down to some sort of equilibrium. Look, maybe in decades to come, we'll get to a multi hundred trillion dollar. If we get there sooner, man, we're all going to be extreme millionaires and we can all afford that ticket to Mars with Elon Musk. But I can't, I can't see that happening just yet. So let's wait a little bit longer and just really bring the hopium back down to a nopium space. Ripple deal with MoneyGram officially over. So that's not good news, not a good sign for, for Ripple and of course the XRP token. Just a little update here in case you hadn't seen it already. Next piece is on BlockFi. I do have a link to this in the description down below. It's an affiliate link. So you'll get up to $250 of Bitcoin if you sign up with them. However, Sunday they were temporarily paused because they were doing an update to the system. So just keep that in mind if, if that ever happens. They said everything is still safe. Your funds are still safe and they'll just be back up online after they were um, doing some system upgrades here. You can see upgrading their system. So that's essentially like, uh, it's not, it's like a savings platform. You can put your crypto on there, but remember it's not insured. That's like with all of these uh, affiliate companies where you've got BlockFi, Crypto.com, Celsius, Nexo, these aren't insured like your typical bank account. However, it is a great way to earn some interest. So I wouldn't be betting everything on it, not the family house, but I think it's a good way to have some of my crypto earning something for me. It's a little bit of a risk, obviously, because something anything could happen to these companies. But so far, they have been showing that they're pretty stable time and time again. NFTs, Wonder Woman, crypto art NFTs lasso up 1.85 million. If this is not in a bubble, I don't know what is. However, bubbles can go a hell of a lot further than we can imagine. So just keep that in mind. The NFTs are going crazy. The difficulty if you hold an NFT, you have to find a buyer for that specific NFT. You can't sell off little fractions of it like you can with Bitcoin. You can buy fractions of a Bitcoin, fractions of ETH, but you 
you can't sell off uh, a lot of these NFTs. I don't think you can sell any of them by fractions. You need to sell the whole piece. So imagine, for example, if there was this one NFT that's 1.85 million, obviously it's multiple here by the, by the looks of it. Uh, you need to find one buyer to get that money back. And if you don't have it, the price keeps dropping until you find a buyer that is willing to pay the price to buy the whole piece. So that's the risk with the NFTs. They can skyrocket a hell of a lot, but obviously they can definitely dump. More news, third Bitcoin ETF in Canada set to launch. Canadian regulators have approved a third Bitcoin ETF set to launch tomorrow after more than 500 million invested in competing products. So Canada is going full steam ahead with these Bitcoin ETFs and we're yet to see one in the US. This is their third ETF. It's only a matter of time. Uh, we've got the CI Galaxy Bitcoin ETF will launch tomorrow under the symbol BTCX on the Toronto Stock Exchange. So I think we're probably going to see a Bitcoin ETF in the US sometime this year, especially with their northern neighbors getting three already. They got to get into the into the game. Galaxy Digital Asset Manager uh, Michael Novogratz, founder founded Galaxy Digital, will execute BTC trading and act as a sub advisor for the new ETF. So, if anyone can do it, we've got to wait for Michael Novogratz to get something going in in the US space as well. A little more Bitcoin news before we get into the charts, and here we have uh, Norway's six billion dollar company establishes Bitcoin unit. So the company is six billion, public company and it has a uh, another unit that's going to buy some Bitcoin. So according to the official press release, which we can see right here, the, the CT, which is the partner, the, the piece of the company, is initially capitalized with NOC, 500 million. I think that's Norwegian Krona or Norwegian Crown. Someone tell me in the comments. 58 million, that's $58 million. Aka ASA mentioned that the new Bitcoin unit will initially focus on establishing partnerships with leading players in the cryptocurrency market. CT has already entered into a collaboration agreement with Blockstream. So this is the press release over here as well. All official stuff, what they want to focus on, investing in and owning Bitcoin, pretty decent, 58 million. Uh, joining the Bitcoin broader blockchain community, etc. I won't bore you guys with that, but more big Okay, let's get over into the charts. Uni jumps 50% to become first ever DeFi DAP coin in crypto market cap top 10. 24 to 33, we saw the break at around 27, which was uh, the entry point. That was the signal. Let's move across to the chart. Uni chart on the daily. We don't need to get into the hourly or the 15 minute just yet. This was the little break here. We got a swing lower and then breaks the top here. This is the, the riskier part to get into the trade because this is only the first confirmation. Nice high volume, nice high close. Got to close above the dump bar. So we got a dump here and a dump here and it closed above both of those, above this close and above the high. Strong, next day closed uh, up there again, was testing those lower levels. You can see it just dropped down to try and test if there are any more heavy sellers left. Uh, the next day, another week test look at that you would say it's strong because the volume is down there's just no more sellers and the buyers are getting ready next day break out break above the high high close and the then uh, yesterday we just saw it retest the old high with a nice higher close $33.23 the top here 32 no 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 call it 33 so we got a close above the old all-time high of about 23 cents they're all little subtle signs. Now, if we get a little drop back down to here, no big deal, I don't think, because we got close, close, all these closes, provided the market stays above this level, we're looking pretty sweet, above that $29, $30 level. But I think we're probably gonna stay up in this area before we begin to take off again, leading into maybe some sort of other rumors about Uniswap and their V3, their version three of reducing gas fees, which is a huge thing we know now in the whole Ethereum space. So Uni, is it still a purchase? It's later in the game, especially from around that $27 to $28 level, but breaking into all-time highs. Personally, it's still a good trade. I would just be keeping my stops a little bit closer in case it went against me. Not financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy uh, Uni. Definitely have an exit strategy in mind as well. 
You don't want to be going into trades without an exit strategy because then you're just part of the retail investors. The professionals have an exit strategy. They get out, they make the money. It doesn't matter if the market continues to go off without them. That's what we teach in the course. We need to have an exit strategy so that you can take your profits, rotate them into something else or do something with them in, in the physical world. You can't just leave them sitting in cryptocurrencies. Let's have a look at uh, TVK before we finish up with Ethereum. And TVK, BUSD, boom. I thought you guys were buying this after you saw it in the video, but I think my video came out just after it started to move. So on the hourly chart here, because we just don't have much data, break out of the high, retest, another retest, started moving again. So it's to me, I think it's still pretty early on in this. N uh, TVK is an NFT marketplace, so I don't need to buy the individual goddamn NFTs. That would just like destroy me having to try and research all of these NFTs. I like finding the marketplace, so I'm taking a cut of each of these NFT sales, and that's what TVK are doing. They have the marketplace on their website. Are they going to be the leader in this? Who the hell knows? All I care about is getting a good trade out of them and then seeing what happens further down the track. Uh, TVK on the US dollar looks good. TVK on the Bitcoin value also breaking up into, yeah, just all time highs. I'm not including this bar here because this is the listing dump. And we have, yeah, basically gone just above the old all time high on that little spike. This is a more solid all time high and we're beginning to trend up again in that space. Um, volume on the high is not the best, but again, we're only on an hourly chart and we've just seen it begin to uh, to push higher. Four hour chart, four hour chart looks okay too. All right, that's good. Nice close above all of these tops. TVK looking like a decent trade at the moment, still early days as well. Obviously this breakout would have been the best. No worries, we're, we're not that far from that point. So we're currently from the breakout that I would see here, uh, about 23% down, if we do it the other way, it's gone up about 30%. So we know in these spaces it can do hundreds of percent. Still early days in my opinion for TVK, a, a good NFT project to research. Uh, TVK, Uni, let's lastly look at Ethereum. And if we've got time, we'll have a look at ADA as well. ETH, USD, beautiful, amazing. Four hour chart, we've broken out of that inverse head and shoulders, which everyone on YouTube is looking at. But the main thing I wanted to look at here was in Wyckoff theory, uh, we want to see the market at least come up and begin to break above the levels of the dump. So this was the dump day. This is the second dump. And that's the close and the close and the market has now touched and regained some momentum. Now I'm not saying this is going to break through to all time highs just yet. I wouldn't be surprised if we did see a little push up, then another dump back somewhere down to this level around 1600 would be amazing. And that would be another buying opportunity in my books. I don't think we'll get there. But even if we did get a little bit of a drop, that would just really wind things up a lot better to push on harder. So the volume has dropped overall on the way up. But we have seen that many times before on more uh, increases, especially on Bitcoin as it begins to break through to uh, all time highs again. You know, I put that post up the other day about looking at Ethereum for about a five week period under the all time high. Hopefully we get that to so it builds a better foundation before it can take off. All the news is out there. We, we know it. the gas fees will be coming down at some point. Uh, the ecosystem has the most developers. All of the news is still there for Ethereum and the chart is looking very, very good. Now let's take one last update at Cardano. $1.14. We are holding ground again, but it is still trickling out. That volume is just getting lighter and lighter, unfortunately. Uh, the last few days, light volume, light volume increased here. The, the thing that's holding us up is we haven't dropped too much further in percentages compared to the last three drops, but the volume is a little bit critical at this stage. So again, we'll just update it and look at it uh, on the next couple of uh, videos. Cardano Ethereum, yesterday, another down day on increased volume, not a good sign. Cardano Bitcoin, another down day, increased volume, not a good sign. Cardano Polkadot, it looks like winding up here because Polkadot seems to be having another sideways period as well. 
So Cardano not looking the strongest against Binance, also holding up, was a down day the other a uh, couple of days ago. Overall, nothing to be too concerned about yet, but we definitely don't want to see it begin to just break down and break down and break down further. I think it might just be needing a, a fair bit more time to hold its ground uh, compared to, you know, well, after we've seen it push up so hard, so fast. I'll leave it there. Cardano, Uniswap, TVK, Ethereum. We've covered a lot in today's video. Plenty of Bitcoin uh, bullish news out there. Ethereum bullish news, NFT bullish news. NFT is probably the biggest one I wouldn't want to get stuck in because of uh, how low the volume and the liquidity can be in that space. But in terms of a cryptocurrency that can be traded and it does something in the space like TVK, that is how I would hedge my bet. Even things like Engine. But we've seen Engine pump a hell of a lot at the moment. So got to use our money wisely to get some bigger, better returns. That's it for today's video. Thanks again, guys. You can join me on Instagram, daily Q&As, answering your questions over there if you've got questions to ask. You can also check out the retirement fund update on Instagram, uh, sitting around 233,000 today, up nearly 800% from last year. Uh, join us at, on the Investor Accelerator. Uh, discount is still on and the price will be increasing soon. So get onto that before it does. That's about it for today's video. So if you did find some value, let me know. Hit the like button down below. Let's get us to 2000 likes. It goes a long way to pushing the content out in the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you haven't already. Bell notification icon. Let's get to 100,000. And I'm trying to get some uh, interviews done with some other crypto YouTubers. So we'll see how we go with that. You know, everyone's very, very busy at this point in time. That is the video. Thank you guys for joining me yet again. I'll see you at the next one. Till then, have more fun to get more done.